So we wanted to start off by talking about and explaining the Uniform Unclaimed Property Act. So the Uniform Unclaimed Property Act has been adopted by all of the states in one form or another. In 1954, the Uniform Law Commission decided to promulgate the Uniform Disposition of Unclaimed Property Act back in 1954. This decision was based on the fact that it is possible for a holding institution with intangible perso personal property to do nothing with its customers' property and to, and to communicate with them as little as possible to be considered lucrative silence. So this lucrative silence was the motivation to create the Uniform Law Commission. Utah and Idaho law follow the 1981 Uniform Act, although revisions were last made to the Act in 1995. You can find Utah's unclaimed property law under Utah Code Title 67, Chapter 4A, and Idaho's under Idaho Code Title 14, Chapter 5. Unclaimed property laws really have three main goals. So the first is to reunite, to reunite owners with their rightful property, protect the holders from liability after they've transferred the property over to the state, and lastly, to ensure that any economic windfall is to the benefit of the state and its citizens. And just as a point of interest, the state of Utah is currently holding around $132 million in assets for persons whose last known address was reported to be in Utah. And the state of Idaho is currently holding $111 million in assets. So unclaimed property isn't a lost and found for purses or wallets. Therefore, you're not obligated to send us that umbrella no one has claimed that's been sitting around your office for six months. It's not surplus property. It's not a new business scheme. Unclaimed property is things like uncashed checks, deposits, forgotten insurance payments, or even lost dividend payments. Unclaimed property law has also been referred to as the W.C. Fields Law. And I don't know if any of you have heard of him. I hadn't, so I did some research on him. He was an American entertainer. Apparently, as a side note, he was an amazing juggler. Um, he lived around the early 1900s. He was ex incredibly fearful of slipping back into the poverty of his youth. So he set up bank accounts all throughout the country under many different aliases. So when he died, his heirs spent years trying to, find, trying to contact hundreds of banks um, and trying to find his assets. States require businesses to report property that hasn't been redeemed by its rightful owner after a certain amount of time has lapsed, depending on the type of property. An uncashed original check might be too old to cash, but the obligation is still owed. It's the state's job to act as custodian of the property and return the property to the owners who are legally entitled to it. Currently, Utah accomplishes this by posting a list of individuals with unclaimed property on their website and publishing a list once a year in newspapers. Idaho also accomplishes this by posting a list of individuals with unclaimed property on our website and we actually publish a quarterly website posting of such list in the official newspaper of each Idaho county. So what does the state charge for this service? It's free. And what do you do when a finder contacts you and tells you that they have thousands out there for the claiming? Contact us and we'll search for you for free. We wanted to include this slide so we could kind of give you a glimpse into the state's process of what happens once they receive the unclaimed property funds from holders from you. So holder reports are due to Idaho and Utah by November 1st of each year. The states then reconcile the reports and the owner names are added to Utah and Idaho's respective searchable websites. The states hold these funds in perpetuity, which means forever, until the funds are claimed. I also wanted to go over just a, a list of terms that are specific to unclaimed property. Um, there are terms and words that you might not hear very often and you might hear when working on unclaimed property. So kind of just wanted to go through them. The first is uh, abandonment period or dormancy period. This can also be referred to as the waiting period. The abandonment period or dormancy period is the time in which the business must hold on to the property funds before they can be turned over to the state. During this period, the owner of the property must not be taking any action with their property. Aggregate is a group of many individual owner accounts reported in one lump sum total. A lot of times these items are reported without names, addresses, or even social security numbers. If this information is not provided in the report, then the holders must retain this information in their records so that the state can refer back to the holders if someone attempts to claim that property. Utah prefers to have this information reported to them so that they can advertise the names on their website and in newspapers 
and so that they're able to return the property without having to refer back to the holder. Idaho actually does not accept aggregates and owner information must be provided. A custodian is an entity or individual who holds, who holds the unclaimed property in a safekeeping capacity. Dormancy date. This is the most recent date that the owner and the holder of the property have made active contact with each other. Examples of activity can even include cashing a dividend check. A sheet is taken from Old English law where abandoned property would transfer ownership to the king. Today a sheet is not used in the literal sense and that states um, do not take title as once did the king. They serve as custodian of the property. A holder is any entity or person that's in possession of unclaimed property until it's transferred to the owner or the state on behalf of the owner. Indemnification. This is an agreement that protects the holder from loss or liability after they've transferred the unclaimed property over to the state. Utah and Idaho both provide for indemnification when the holder transfers the unclaimed property over to the states. Owner is the person that has the legal title or the right to claim the unclaimed property. Apparent owner is the person whose name appears on the books or records of the holder as the person that is entitled to that property. Owner initiated activity. For example, an owner establishes contact with a holder by cashing a dividend check or answering a questionnaire. It's where the owner is taking some action. Unclaimed property is property, usually money, that's reported to the state of Utah or Idaho. It's monies that have remained unclaimed by the owner. Almost all unclaimed property is intangible property. The underlying obligation is that intangible property, not the specific check, payroll, draft, or other document. Tangible property are items found in safety deposit boxes, which can be located in many places, including banks, hospitals, or even hotels. And a lot of interesting things are found by the states, as you can imagine, when safety deposit boxes and their contents are turned over to the states. Idaho, for example, has found old gold teeth, uh, photos, and even rocks from the beaches of Normandy from the D-Day invasion. <laughs> 